Hello folks, welcome back to the channel, thank you very much for joining me, you are most welcome as always. Today, Matchbox March continues. And today we're going to have something uh, which for me is a first, very interesting, I've not seen, I've not, really not seen the kit before. Um, this particular version came out under the Revel ownership in the 90s I think it was, late 80s, early 90s. I don't know much about the aircraft, so it's the Heinkel HE70. F2, and I made a joke about this when I um, did the intro vid saying I was going to do this Matchbox March series and I <laughs> said that it looked like a Spitfire and a Heinkel had got together and had a baby which it kind of does, if you look closely, it's got what looks like Spitfire's wings and it's got the back end of a Heinkel 111 um, very interesting now uh, I've done a little bit of research now to, to try to compensate for my utter ignorance it's very interesting some of the comments that have been made about this uh, aircraft because I am not the only one to sort of have that initial knee-jerk reaction knowing nothing about it. A lot of people in the 1930s, when it came out in I think 33 this aircraft, uh, 32, a lot of people uh, when they saw the Spitfire uh, made the assumption that it had been copied from this aircraft. However, um, there's a, an aerodynamicist that worked with R.J. Mitchell who came out in 1940 and said no actually it is a coincidence we had seen that but we were already working on the Spitfire wing which is completely different actually it's got a different cross section and, and the actual thickness is much much thinner on the Spitfire wing is one of the unique things about it whereas this has got quite a thick uh, elliptical wing it's just a, it's just in plan view it looks a bit like a Spitfire wing and the back end is classic hindcore you know Anyway, um, it, came, it came out in 1932, this plane, and it was intended as a, basically a high-speed transport aircraft, so almost like an early days version of an executive jet, you might think of it in those terms, for transporting company executives, and of course then they had the Nazi party came along. Some of their high-ups used to fly around in them, because it was very fast. It was, um, And by the way, you'll see in a moment that on the packaging, that's all in German and other languages, not very helpfully, to be honest. Um, but it basically had a top speed of 415 kilometres an hour um, and it used to fly about 3,400 metre height, so that's 10,000 feet maximum ceiling. So it's like a high speed transport plane. It was used as a mail aircraft as well. Uh, it's in the Lufthansa colours here because they used to transport their executives around as well in it. That's quite an interesting plane and I want to know more. I'm sure you do too. So let's have a quick butchers at the box then. So zoom you in. So it is, uh, I was going to say PK, but it's not, of course it's got a Revel reference. So the actual kit reference is 40132, and it's a 23 there. 40132. Um, and again, nothing but German, German, German. There is a bit of English, just the basic bit of English. 1992 this came out, so I was, I was right. I said early 90s. Uh, and then there's not much else in English on it at all, so let's hope there's more on the instructions because that's um, not overly helpful in selling the product, I have to say. It makes me wonder if this was actually uh, intended for the German market, this particular kit. Uh, I've been given this kit by a relative of mine, so very grateful to him for that. Uh, and I've got some well, the faded looking, oh, I've got some metallic looking plastic. Okay. Uh, oh, well, the instructions are a little more sensible than some of the other matchbox ones I've seen recently. So, um, English, do 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 do, tells you that cement. There's no history in English, is that right? That's a bit disappointing because they've got it in German, they've got it in French, looks like Italian, and Dutch, but nothing in English. That's silly, it wasn't it? This is. I don't know how Ravel were expecting to sell the product. It's almost like it's a. Uh, a European issue. I can't believe they're selling it like that in the UK with no description about what the hell it is on the side in English. A bit strange. Anyway, um, yeah, the only English on the front is about don't cut yourself and be careful with the glue, etc. etc. Uh, then there's a um, basic paint guy, we'll get straight into it. It's a bit faded, obviously, with a shop window or something. Anyway, what have we got here? We've got is that the colour colour? Is that it? Hmm. Just zoom you in. You'll see why I'm looking a bit grumpy. <laughs> this is this appears to be the colour call out with the three variants. That's it. What you get there. This is not Ravel's finest hour, and I'm not a Ravel fan at the best of times. Um, 
Uh, I'm sure the kit will be okay, but yeah, the presentation is enough, isn't it? Then we've got um, instructions which look fairly clear. They're, they're quite matchbox-like, I guess. Um, showing you how to build up your cockpit and you've got some quite plush looking seats behind. Um, it's like an executive luxury aircraft really isn't it? Uh, high speed, you know, business people and executives and government officials that sort of thing. So you're building up your main cockpit area, these rather nice bench seats here, luxury seats. Um, like sofas really aren't they? <laughs> then you've got some windows to go in here for the side of the fuselage then you're clamping it all together. I've got to say when you see it like that it looks like an Anchor 111 in the back end doesn't it? <laughs> and then you've got your propellers, uh, propeller. It's powered by the way by um, a BMW 6 V12 engine so yeah it's, it's like a it looks like a Spitfire of steroids it really does. Uh, an unusual plane. You bring that all together, you've got your propeller going in there with your spinner and then you are going to bring that into the cowling which is here and you've got these lovely elliptical wings which do look nice I have to say. That's going on the front, then you've got the, uh, the canopy uh, cover for the pilot on the top and it actually has a, a gun, so the, it has a gunner as well so I know it was, uh, there was talk of it being used as a bomber, a light bomber at the start of the war. I'm not sure if they ever actually did put it into service as such or use it as like a training bomber. I think that was more likely. But an interesting plane, no question. Putting your wings on, uh, you've got your top deck with your, your gun in there and then you're putting in your intake underneath. You've got your exhausts here for your V12 engine. Um, there is actually, t ah ok, there is actually two variants here, it doesn't explain it very well. So you have this variant where I've just said there's a gun, for a gunner here with a window, or there's one without a rear gunner which is more the male, high speed male plane and executive plane. So they obviously have two variants. I, I, you know, we're supposed to guess this because there's no description to tell you, but anyway. Wings go on, um, and again it's kind of repeating itself here. In fact it's repeating itself. It's repeating itself twice because there's two, okay, there's two different engine versions. God, it's not really explaining itself. Okay, if we go back to the beginning, let's just rewind. Go back to the beginning, there's two different versions. There's a cowl that looks like a radial engine sort of arrangement, which I guess it is. And then you've got your V12 arrangement. But this is about as clear as mud, quite frankly. There's nothing to tell you that there are two versions make a hole, you know, well, what size, that's not very helpful either. <laughs> Ravel weren't good, were they, in the early 90s, they've got to be honest. Um, I cannot help believe that Matchbox's instructions would have been better than this. There'd have been more information, more detail and more clarity, anyway. So, yeah, so you've got two versions of the canopy and you've got two versions of the engine and it doesn't explain any of that anywhere, you're just going to have to find out for yourself and then eventually put your wings on. Then your gear goes in here and then finally the wheels, gear going in, main wheels and covers if you want to keep them shut. Then we get here a little bit more of a sort of call out data for the Lufthansa version I think it is. Again nothing explained, there's no writing to tell you what they are and then it's even, jeez, this is such a bad concept. Um, this this looks, looks like a prototype of a set of instructions, doesn't it? That someone needs to come in and say, right, we put here, this is the Italian version, da 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 da. Uh, it's Spanish, isn't it, I think? All right. Spanish National Air Force, yeah. Um, but just such a hodgepodge of data all over the place. And why do why they put. Why didn't they put this at the beginning? That would have been far more sensible. Say, so, there are three variants, there are two variants of engine, etc, etc. Anyway, so here we've got the, is that the Italian version this time? Uh, Lufthansa version. I don't know, so it's Hungarian Air Force. So you've got a Hungarian version. Again, you've got to cross-reference to try and understand what it is. How bizarre, bizarre. 
lovely looking plane, very interesting plane, but that is about the worst conceived instructions on any matchbox kit I've ever seen. It's almost like the Chinese have taken it and done that in the modern era. <laughs> anyway, I won't be too harsh on it because it was 1992, but even so, you know, that was stupid. Why can't they have some writing? Why can't we have some history? Why can't it be in English with clarity? It's not asking a lot, is it? You know. I mean, Matchbox didn't have a lot of writing in theirs, but theirs were so clear and obvious, you didn't need it. My goodness, look at that. Isn't that like a Hankel 111? You can really see what I mean, can't you, those of you that are familiar with the, uh, the World War II bomber. Look at the profile there. It's like a little Hankel 111, isn't it? It's got raised panel detail. Quite finely done though, it's quite nice. I quite like the plastic, it's, um, it's silvery plastic, it's quite nice actually. It's, there's lots of parts that are off the sprue here, so let's have a little play, shall we? Let's play, let's play. Okay. Yeah, there we are. Not got the best locating points I've ever seen, if I'm honest, but uh, there we go. Okay. Elliptical, whoops, elliptical wing. It's off the sprue as well, obviously. Um, it's kind of a gull wing, though. Look at the profile. It's like a gull wing, isn't it? Yeah. A little bit stukerish, isn't it? So it looks like a Spitfire at that angle. Yep. And then here it looks more like a, a Stuka style. Um, in fact, there's more parts that are off the sprue here. So I might be able to play with these and put it together. Let's do it. I like the fillet. Look at that, that fillet there. That's lovely. Very nicely done. Does it all fit in? Hmm, big ejector, big ejector pins in it. Okay, yeah, looks, looks quite decent. That's okay. Very Spitfire-like at this angle, isn't it? Hmm, interesting. No, I quite like the plastic as well. So we've got, looks that, that's going into there. There we go. How's that? Nice, 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 nice. I like it, I like it, I like it. It's growing on me, it's growing on me. Anyway, let's um, stop playing around like a five year old and let's look, look at them properly and give you a proper view of it all. So, here we have the sprue, which has still got the starboard wing is still on the sprue, which is good. And then we've got these little seats here. And then you've got your tails, very well, 111 bomber style. Then you've got your twin screw, twin bladed uh, air screw prop. Obviously, the other ones are missing because so we've just had that. It's over there, isn't it? Like that. Then, over here, this is the screw that would have had the uh, fuselages on it. They weren't separated. I think the owner's actually got. Whoops, I think the owner's got this one from eBay. Um, and you do get this, you know. Sometimes you can. I had it myself. Uh, one of my Harriers, uh, the Mark One, I showed recently. Actually, in one of the fifty years of Matchbox magic that I opened the box, and quite a few of those were off the sprue. Um, but it was, yeah. I didn't mind too much because it was, you know, an original. I mean, I could actually mix and match and swap a good a good kit, if you like, that's not it's on the sprue, into the Mark One box, but kind of messing with the authenticity, really. It doesn't matter, does it? You know, as long as the parts are all here and they're all in good shape, that's all that really matters, I think. It's nice to have them on the sprue if you can, but no problem. Now, here we've got this, um, this is the interesting um, sort of top deck where you have the machine gunner option here. So what you got there, this is where, as you look at it, um, the pilot I think is to the right and the, the bit to the rear, open bit to the rear is where the gunner would be. The machine gun would sit in that little recess there. Here's these like sofa chairs. Um, is it that way? I think they're kind of that way up, vertical. Very sort of opulent leather chairs. Then you've got your radial version of the engine. Um, hmm, very interesting. There's your machine gun that's obviously going to be used by the gunner if he's chosen as an option. Over here we have got the slightly 
Yeah, it's not the most detailed uh, kit I've ever seen in terms of the the tooling. It's very, very flat and plain, isn't it? Uh, there's no riveting or panel lining apart from on the wing and the fuselage. Yeah, you can see it there on the wing. But the rest of these parts, these covers are just flat and completely smooth, yeah. Nothing at all. Then you've got your engine, radial engine. Perhaps that's the, that's probably another BMW engine, isn't it? I expect similar to early forerunner of the Fokker Wolf engine there, I suspect. And then you've got your two spinner options here. The blackbirds are bleating about outside my house. They're getting very excited. They've been fighting actually all morning for some reason. Territorial dispute, I think. There's too much of that going on at the moment, isn't there, in the world? But anyway. Um, you've got a little radio area there, that reminds me of the Messerschmitt 262 aerial, doesn't it, on the top of the uh, fuselage, high frequency aerial. And here you've got um, you've got the uh, instruments, so it's got some quite fine parts in it actually, it's nice, nice kit. Yeah, it's not bad at all. And then here, we've got, this is where we've got some of these other bits. Here's the, the other deck. The one that hasn't got the place for a gunner, so it's just got the pilot's bit at the front only. So that would uh, that would go in here, oops, like so, put it in there nicely. Yes, bit of tight fit, it's not too bad, not too bad. Okay, and then we have the um, yeah, I think we actually looked at this at the beginning. Didn't we? This, is, this is the one that's got the uh, the, the other fillet wing. Uh, starboard wing which we saw earlier with the wheels and the three-bladed prop option or the two-bladed prop there two-bladed three-bladed the choice is yours and then we have the clear parts and there's some interesting looking clear parts here because obviously you've got this single or double canopy uh, with the gunner's mount position so that's the this is the one that has the gunner and if it's just the pilot only it's just this one and then you've got the little windows for the passengers to view out of, or the mailman. <laughs> and then uh, last but not least we have got some decals which are a typical matchbox style. Look rather knackered <laughs> to be honest, which a lot of mine do as well. They just don't last long. It's the one thing on the matchbox kits that never lasts long. So I'm not going to peel them off because I don't own this kit, but you can see that they have discolored quite badly. I think you probably want to replace those and not really use them. They're not in the first flush of quality or usability. It's kind of a shame because you get like a decal which goes across here, as you can see. This is for the, the where the windows are. So you get like a decal which is going to give that sort of Lufthansa logo bit. Yeah, anyway, I won't peel them off. I'll try and maintain them in their original condition as much as possible. Uh, and you've got some Spanish and some. Uh, very odd looking Hungarian ones there with the Hungarian flag. It's quite interesting, I mean, it's an interesting plane. I, I think the subject is nice. The only thing that's really annoyed me with this, and it's not rare, is just this instructions and the fact that they didn't bother to put in any of it in English uh, or explain anything or explain that you've got three variants. Okay, you work that out eventually, but the, the, the variants with a gunner or no gunner with a radial or with the sort of inline engine it's not made very clear at all i mean you know a youngster in 1992 would have been totally baffled by this unless they were german french or dutch <laughs> which they seem to have catered for so i'm thinking it's like an export market european only spec kit well there we go it's an interesting aeroplane it's quite a pretty looking plane i've got to say i quite like it it's nice something different and it's certainly an interesting subject to have for Matchbox. Just a shame Matchbox didn't get it out before Revel messed it up. <laughs> this is what they've kind of done. And this is what they do, you know, they, Revel are not, not known for their instruction quality. You know, you look at some of their other 90s from this era of their own. Nothing to do with Matchbox. I mean, I had the 30 second scale Tornado. I actually had three or four editions of that, copies of it. And I sold them on the end because I just looked at it and thought, oh, these instructions were just so nasty. Plastic wasn't great either. This was not a good time for them. Not a good time. But I guess like Matchbox who had gone bust and Airfix who were going bust but got saved by, first of all, Humbrol. And then of course it was uh, Hornby who finally saved them. Uh, Revel were the same. They were struggling a lot in the 90s. The sales were down. 
but they weren't helping their case when they're doing packaging like this, you know. There's nothing at all on here, if you speak English, is understandable. Oh no, that's my fault. It's the way they've done it. Actually, it is in English, it's in the second. Okay, I'm going to have to apologise to Ravel a bit here. Humble pie time. They've done it in the second column. Why can't they just put, you know, Deutsch, English, like they do on the instructions? It's all it says Deutsch, English, French. It's actually just in with the Dutch and the French. It, okay, so we'll, we'll try again. Okay, I'll hold my hand up and apologise, I made a mistake. <laughs> the AT transport plane, which measures Heinkel built for Lufthansa German Airlines, which was introduced into service in 1934, first took to the air in 1932. Luftwaffe commissioned a light bomber version, which was subsequently used in the Spanish Civil War. Okay. The maximum speed was 360 kilometres an hour at 1,000 metres. 360 miles an hour, I'm pretty sure they mean, don't they? Oh no, they go on to say. Fitted with a radial engine, the machine's type designation had a speed of 415 kilometres an hour with 3,400 metres altitude. It doesn't, it's not explaining this well. I'm kind of right in the end. Because it, it, what it means is when it was fitted with an inline engine, then its speed went up to 415 miles an hour. Okay. And then it, had a, uh, it could go up to 3,400 metres, 10,000 feet. So that's what they mean to say. Well, they haven't actually said that. It's just gibberish, really. Fitted with a radial engine. The machine's... Uh, that's a bit of a... Uh, okay. A little bit confusing, that. Anyway. Marks out of 10. I think that it's just uh, very poorly presented. Um, and, and inside, I am right, because it doesn't explain that this is your radial engine. Or this, you know, and this is option one for the Spanish Civil War. This doesn't say any of that. It's just... You just left to start guessing like a guessing game. Not uncommon, not uncommon even today. You know, manufacturers just need to understand, I mean, whether it's 1992 or 2022, you need to be clear and communicate what the product is supposed to be about. And if there are different variants, you need, you know, the, the constructor or the user needs to understand what you're driving at. And if you don't put it in the instructions, it will be really hard to follow. Anyway, I don't want to be too harsh because I did make a mistake there. I missed the fact that they'd actually written it. But they just didn't give you any clue. You know, normally on the on the inside, they actually label it English, French, Italian. Here, it's just, it's sort of in amongst the French. And if you just don't look at it, perhaps my glasses need clean or something. Anyway, it's a nice kit. I thought the actual plastic was nice. Um, it's a very interesting subject, a very interesting aeroplane. Uh, unusual. So I'm going to give it 8 out of 10. I think that's kind of fair. I think the instructions are a bit of a mess, to be honest. Um, but the kit's alright. And uh, yeah, very interesting subject, didn't it? Do you? And thank you for sending that to me, uh, to the owner. Thank you very much, appreciate that. Um, don't hesitate to send you more if you've got any more. Um, whether you want the back or not, don't mind either way. Uh, I'm happy to return stuff always. So that is a very interesting kit. We're going to have another one coming up. We're going to have the uh, the Vickers Wellesley, which is another interesting and another unusual looking plane uh, coming very very soon. I hope you thought it was interesting today. Uh, everybody enjoys it when they watch me make a botch of things. So you know I can take it. I'm a big boy. <laughs> and next time I'll put my better glasses on. I think. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. Thought it was entertaining and interesting. Please give us a thumbs up, even though I did make a botch. Not as bad a botch as what Ravel did with the instructions, but anyway. Um, please come back and don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And if you have, don't forget to ding that notification bell. Smash that like button, as they say, with a thumbs up. And I hope to be back to you very, very soon. I say we've got the Vickers Wellesley, we've got some other interesting matchbox related memorabilia and airfix memorabilia to have a look at very, very soon. Watch this space. We'll be along very, very shortly with that. In the meantime, please all look after yourselves. Take care. Thanks a lot. And bye for now. <laughs> I screwed up today, didn't I? But it's good for a laugh. Bye-bye.